Now to our exclusive interview with President Trump, which wrapped up just moments ago. Chief Intelligence Correspondent Catherine Herridge is live at the White House tonight. Good evening, Catherine. Well, thank you, Mike, and good evening. We've just uh, finished 20 minutes to sit down with uh, President Trump. We've covered a wide variety of topics, including uh, the Attorney General William Barr, who refused to go to the House Judiciary Committee on the basis that he would take questions from committee staff uh, lawyers. He also addressed the issue of whether he would allow the former White House counsel, Don McGahn, to testify to Congress. Here's part of the interview. Well, I've had him testifying already for 30 hours. So is the answer no? And it's really so. I don't think I can let him and then tell everybody else you can't, because especially him, because he was a counsel. Mm -hmm. So they've testified for many hours, all of them. Many, many, so many So as far people. as you're concerned, it's really it's it's kind of done. I can't it's say, done. well, one can and the others can't. Okay, so, so is it done? I would say it's done. We've been Over. through this. Uh -huh. Nobody has ever done what I've done. I've given total transparency. Mm -hmm. It's never happened before like this. So Congress they, should be. They, Congress well, they should shouldn't be, be looking anymore. This is all. Mm -hmm. It's done. Mm -hmm. uh, even my finances. It must have been looked at for thirty-five million dollars. I assume yeah, they, they looked at my taxes. Mm -hmm. I assume that Mueller looked at my financial statements for thirty-five million dollars. And having twenty people plus forty-nine FBI agents and all of the staff and all of the money that was spent. Uh, they. Is, mm -hmm. I assume they looked at my taxes, which are fine. And I assume, except they are under audit, by the way, I will tell you that officially. Cause and the New York Attorney General is coming at you pretty hard. Well, she campaigned on the fact that, oh, I'm going to get Trump, I'm going to get Trump. So right there, she's uh, precluded from doing anything. I mean, can you imagine somebody campaigning, doesn't know anything about me? And she's campaigning on that fact. Uh, so I assume that for the $35 million, they've gone through everything. My taxes, uh, my financial statements, which are phenomenal, they've gone through everything, and I'm so clean. Think of it. After two and a half years and all of that money spent, nothing. Very few people could have sustained that. He also went on at length uh, about Attorney General uh, William Barr saying it was his call uh, to decide not to go uh, and testify today before the House Judiciary Committee. And he made the point that he felt that the Attorney General was being uh, treated uh, differently or, or unfairly, if you will. We also asked him about uh, Venezuela and specifically if there was a physical threat to Juan Guaido or if he was detained, how the U.S. would respond. Here's part of that section. He's actually a brave person and because I know what he's going through. I'm speaking to our people all the time. He's a brave guy. And uh, what's happening in Venezuela said, when you look at 20 years ago, it was one of the wealthiest countries in the world, if you think about it. And now they don't have food and they don't have water and people are dying from hunger. It's a very, very serious situation. What are your red lines in Venezuela? Uh, I don't want to say, but we have lots of options and mm -hmm. some of them are very tough options. Mm -hmm. Is there a tipping point for military intervention? Oh, there's always a tipping point, but uh, certainly I'd rather not do that. I just want to help the people. The people are dying. Mm -hmm. They have nothing. Mm -hmm. These were people that were living well 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Catherine, they have nothing. They don't have water and food. And they're dying of hunger right on the border. It's terrible. And we also asked the president uh, about the 2020 race, especially given another Democrat uh, has entered the field, uh, Senator Bennett. And the president had some surprising answers on how he thinks the Democratic field is shaping up and who he thinks he may face about 18 months from now. You're not going to win. Uh, <laughs> is it I, I Joe think Bi that is Biden it seems to have a lead. I'd be very happy if it were Biden. Happy Sleepy why? Joe. Uh, I think he does a. I think he did a bad job. I'd be running against. So him you and think Obama. he's beatable? I, I just don't think he'd be a very good candidate. I mean, we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. I hope. You know, I I wish him well. Mm -hmm. I'd like him to get it. I'd be happy. I'd be happy with Bernie. Mm -hmm. I personally think it's those two. Between those two. I think it's between those two. Mm -hmm. I don't see anybody else, but could be. You never know. Now, in my case, who would you rather face? I announced, and I think I was pretty much mm -hmm. right. At, I I know I was at the top. From the beginning, I think mm -hmm. he is now leading. Mm -hmm. uh, Bernie would be second. We'll see what happens. Who would you rather face? Oh, well, I don't want to say that to you, but I, I don't think it matters very much. I think we're going to do well. Mm -hmm. We have the strongest economy that we've ever had. We're doing phenomenally. We have the best unemployment numbers, African-American, Asians, mm -hmm. Hispanics, best numbers we've ever had, women, the best in 61 years, unemployment numbers, job numbers, wealth numbers. 
We have the best numbers. We have, I think we have the best economy we've ever had. And we have more people, Catherine, working right now mm -hmm. than ever in the history of our country. So I don't know why somebody beats that. I'd like you to comment on uh, some uh, statements the vice president made while he was campaigning in Iowa. He said China is, quote, not competition for us, for the U.S. Are you talking about which vice president? Uh, vice, I'm sorry, former Vice President Biden. Oh, I apologize. The current sorry. vice president is much more talented. <laughs> uh, he wouldn't have made that statement. Pardon me. Mike Pence would not have made that statement. Uh, everyone's competition. I view everybody as competition. Is he if being naive at, about China? Well, he is very naive about China. China, right now, we lose 500 billion. After I sign the deal, it won't be anything like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, China, just during the Obama years in particular, just mm -hmm. took advantage of our country so badly. Uh, a very, very big competition, China, and I've stopped it, and I am stopping it. You know, during the course of the last two and a half years, we've gone up $17 trillion in value. China's gone down $17 trillion. Mm -hmm. China, as you know, has taken a very, very big hit because of the tariffs and everything else I've imposed. We'll see whether or not we have a deal. We have a very good chance to have a great deal. But for somebody to be so naive and say that China is not a problem, uh, if Biden actually said that, that's a very dumb that's, statement. Uh, that we also asked the president a series of questions uh, about sort of the next phase of this Russia investigation, which is the genesis of the FBI's counterintelligence investigation in 2016. And he told us that he expects the declassification of these Russia records. Those are the surveillance warrant applications. Uh, he intimated uh, weeks, uh, maybe a couple of months, but in effect, uh, that is coming soon. I also asked him to address uh, an editorial in The New York Times, an opinion piece by the former FBI director director, where he called the president, quote, amoral, and he claimed that had rubbed off on the attorney general and deputy attorney general. Uh, I asked the president, uh, if you take Director Comey kind of out of the mix or the equation, if you will, over the last couple of years, whether the country would really be in the same place. And the president uh, essentially said that he felt that uh, Director Comey uh, shared a lot of the blame uh, for where we are uh, today and the, and the division, if you will, Mike, uh, in the country. Fascinating conversation. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, Catherine. Thank you. Thanks very much. You can see more of Catherine's exclusive interview with President Trump tonight at 11 p.m. Eastern on Fox News at Night with Shannon Bream.